My name is Oliver Spencer. I was born here in the village of, or town of Old Road, historical town of Old Road, and that a good part of my life uh, has been spent living, running, going to school, fishing um, here in Old Road. And um, all my life, Old Road has become the center for me. Throughout the length and breadth of St. Kitts, Old Road has become the, or known as the number one fishing area. We have successfully moved fishing from one level to a higher level. For instance, there was a time when Old Road could have, would have boasted four net boats, nets that were um, used for catching all sorts of fish. Today we have one. And it's a sad experience to see that um, we no longer have um, <clears throat> this type of operation to do the fishing and uh, but there is another side to all of that in that um, we have moved away from most of the net fishing and now are targeting um, with the experience of our fishermen targeting much larger fish like the pelagic, the billfish, the swordfish etc. And so it's in a way it has become a form of conservation because the shallower reefs are no longer being attacked by the fishermen. So in truth and in fact um, we are practicing conservation. I am certain that um, the Carib Indians and also the Arawaks who preceded them would have fished from the river, Wingfield River, which no longer flows um, regularly to the sea. They would have fished in, those, in that river because you had freshwater mullets. Uh, this is something that a lot of people, even people who live in Old Road, doesn't know because the river, um, the water has been used now to help bass steer. So you have a 10 inch line extending up to bass steer. You have water going down to Deep Bay. So a lot of that water is now used for domestic purposes. But people don't know that just like the Carib Indians and the Arawaks, um, the people of Old Road could virtually have lived out of Wingfield River because you had freshwater eels, you had langoustine, you had crayfish, and you had the freshwater mullets. So all of that was, was here. Of course, too, they would have um, fished from the sea as well. With the sites, as far as I'm concerned, um, the only one now that is really kept in good nick because it's on a rock, and that is the one um, from which Carabel Batik has developed their logo, that is of the, the pregnant um, individual on that rock at, um, over at Wingfield Road. Um, that is more popularized along with the, the one at Stone Fort, the site at Stone Fort. But there are other sites that people don't realize exist in Old Road. Um, up on the walls of um, Wingfield, same in Wingfield Estate Yard, on the walls of the, um, of the river, there used to be carib drawings there. But they have been eroded because they were on like sand. And it was soft, the, the, the hills are soft. So over a period of time, wind, rain um, have erased them. Um, there is another site in um, someone's yard, 
not too far from Wingfield Road, that has r small drawings on, on rocks. And there was another one at Stony Gut, up on the upper reaches of Stony Gut. That is still there. Um, and that is just a simple drawing of a face or a head. So those are, uh, are there. And I'm certain there might be others which no one have shown any interest of um, f um, seeking or to find out for if, there, if there are more sites. To some extent, because I'm always interested in things pertaining to history. History of the Caribbeans, of the people who, who came. I have to, I'm, I'm going to put my two penny worth in here by saying those were the people who came. We as Africans, descendants of Africans, were brought here, whether we like it or not, it's a historical fact. But those were the people who came. For instance, now we have um, um, a mountain name have been changed from Mount Misery from colonial times to Mount Lyamiga, which is, was the Carib name for St. Kitts. And I feel a sort of um, a relationship and because I've developed a love for, for these sites. So wherever I went and I traveled throughout the hills or along the river, um, river banks or the river edges, um, we're always looking to see if there were other drawings. So that's, that's my connection there. It's sad really, looking back in time, that Stone Fort, which has most of the drawings, I think there are drawings in the Kayon area too, which I've never explored. Um, what could have been done would have been either to frame them or put something over them so wind and rain would not affect them. Um, people have interfered to the extent where they started painting and using, which I don't think is the best best um, way to deal with these things. Then you had the big one at um, the pregnant one at, at, at um, Wingfield Road on that huge rock. Um, again, to, they have put paint on it. And as far as I'm concerned, a little cleaning with whatever material just to show up the naturalness of the, of, of the drawing rather than a painted, a gilted looking pregnant person there. So, um, but I think, I don't know if it is too late or what can be done, but those are some of the things I feel could have been done back then in the old days. But there was not the, there wasn't the type of interest to that extent that said, okay, they need protecting. And um, we're going to continue to lose, especially those on the soft sandy hills that there are cliffs that there are. If it is possible to erect, say, a glass face over them where wind and um, where erosion will not affect them, what's remaining, fine. Um, the one at Wingfield, this is, I'm thinking about the ones at, yes. uh, at Stonefort because um, the one at Stony Gut, it is still there and it's on, so it's in a, on a soft cliff again. So that again too should be framed and um, access to it should be, I'm happy that not a lot of people know about it. I've shown it to my grandchildren, um, but that is still there. Those on the upper reaches of um, Wingfield River those seem to have already gone because um, again erosion, water, wind, rain. Well that's, <laughs> um, I have no problem. I think uh, many of our West Indian people, Caribbean people, have a problem with Columbus. Um, that is when St. Kitts was discovered. Um, 
my town in which I was born, historical old road town, um, it was here that Columbus first approached St. Kitts. And it is said that it was he who named it Old Road. Um, the legend um, said that when he came back on his second visit, he said that we were uh, back at the Old road, uh, road again, meaning roadstead, because it's not a, ta it's not a port because it's an, open, it's an open bay, as it, you can see. And he no doubt would have watered his boats from either Wingfield River or Franklin's River. There's another river just here. That again, too, has been heavily um, curtailed by the, the, the efficiency of the water catchment area. So that water goes from Franklin's all the way up to Bastyr. So you have two rivers supplying Bastyr with water. But as far as I'm concerned, the, the, the 1492 thing, I am happy for that because um, I love the town Old Road. I love the name and everything about um, this place I love. So I'm quite happy. This here, where that property is over there, was a fort. As a matter of fact, the cannon you can see there, you might probably be able to take a shot of the cannon, was found when they were trying to excavate um, the foundation to put these rocks in as sure defense, and that was found. When there were um, but that was over on that side. Here, where the actual restaurant is, was another old building which was known locally as the Burn House because a huge fire burned the property down. And all was standing was the walls, the old walls that were there, that were eventually um, bought by an Rodian who built a dwelling house. But the hurricanes came, destroyed the wall, the retaining wall, and then destroyed the property. And um, the property, this area was bought by the late Dr. William Herbert. And uh, so the boys, in an effort to take their fish, fishing from one level to the next, in the creation of the Sprat Net, um, asked to lease the land, so they, they are now leasing here. But this is basically the history of um, um, the Splatnet because it was their desire to take their fishing from just catching and selling on the side of the road to preparing it and making a meal of it.